Hey everybody and how's it going? Uh, <laughs> the trailer. I really want to show it to you, but I think I'm going to wait. I think I'm going to wait. Uh, my arms are pretty, <laughs> pretty much rubber. I have been polishing that thing until I don't want to, don't want to polish anymore. And I think it's about as good as it's going to get. Face it, the aluminum on it is about 80 years old. So we are jumping over to fabbing the hoop set on the double, on the Land Rover. I almost said double cab. And I'm building exactly like I built the double cab. I played around with kind of angling, kind of angling these in to, sh to follow the shape of the roof line of the cab itself, but I hated it. So I went back and put them back straight. I like it a lot better. I tried it straight first and it just, it's an optical illusion. It looks like it's not straight. <laughs> these two are pretty good alignment. So it just looks kind of funny, you know, but we're going with it. I'm going to build it exactly like the bus one that I built. These two are, are getting closer. Yeah, that was pretty good. The way that I built the bus one is I did a uh, one inch tube on the bottom. I'm trying not to shoot you right into the sun here. So I did one inch on the bottom and then I did a three quarter sleeved into it so I can adjust the height. So I can actually take this top of mine off and shove it forward. I can undo two clasps back here, shove it forward, and I can raise, take out, you know, four bolts per side, and we can raise this up. So if I want to put something really tall in here without taking the whole thing off, I can. So this will just shove up there and lay up on the cab of the truck. And then I don't have to take all of this off of there in order to do that. So it comes down to about, I don't know, I think they're about a foot. So I can go up a foot more on this one. I probably won't allow that much space on the Land Rover. I don't know, I might, we'll see. It's not gonna be hauling anything super tall in it. <laughs> it's like the Roger Rabbit car, you know? So that's how I built it. And then just bent the uh, U-channel and then there's a board, there's a slat that goes in there and then this top piece that kind of protects your canvas from getting all beat up. So that's how we're going to build uh, the one on the Rover, same exact way. And I've got the U-channel right now. The only thing is the double cab, I had someone bend those top pieces for me and I bought the steel from them and so they cut me a pretty good deal. And it was just right down the road from where I work. So that was awesome. While I needed that one in a in a super big hurry, I need this one in a super big hurry. <laughs> but those guys turned that around like that day. Like I dropped them off that morning and after work went and picked them up. Uh, steel has shot up significantly. And if you have not bought steel lately, uh, you're in for a real surprise. About three times what it was uh, in September. So just since September, it has shot up. So I had this. So rather than pay someone to bend that, I've made a buck, which is what I did to them. I sent them a plywood buck of the roof line, and I just put a piece of cardboard up. It's actually almost exactly the same as the bus. So I still had the bus pattern. And I cut the bus pattern in half so that I could keep half for a Volkswagen. And then I made a new one that is now a Land Rover half. And then made a buck uh, of plywood with that so that we can hopefully get this to bend. Now, I'm not stupid enough to think that I can just, you know, heat this and bend it. So I am gonna pie cut, I've marked here. I'm gonna pie cut. And I may just start with every other and see how that works. But I've marked it about every half inch. This is where that buck starts. And then this is where my pie cut kind of ends. So we're gonna see if we can't kind of weld that up to make it one of these. And if it goes pretty well, we'll make two of them. And that will be our hoops. I'm going to do, like I said, same exact thing, wood slats. This is not how a Land Rover one typically is. So it'll be, it'll be interesting to see what it looks like. They don't typically do the wood slat thing. So we're, we're giving the, the Land Rover a little taste of Volkswagen. All right, let me go get uh, a saw and cut this and see if we can't kind of get, this is kind of a sharp turn, see if we can't kind of get that to do what we need it to do. 
Well, I wasn't sure that was going to work, but I think it's going to work just fine. I probably wouldn't even have to pie cut as big a chunk out of there. So I think on the next ones, I'm just going to try uh, cutting a straight cut. I think maybe just a straight cut might get it. I don't know. Or should I do all of them the same on this one? It bends really easy, so it's going to go around there just fine. And then up here, the roof line on this guy is pretty flat, whereas the, the double cab, you know, you got that bus hoop. So I dropped the roof line down. So I, we, we should be able to just kind of bend this by just brute strength, I hope. If not, I can I, I marked where my middle is. Oops. So if not, we'll just kind of pie cut right there and peek it out right there. I think that's gonna work. I I need to finesse it, obviously. I just did that so you could see that it's gonna work, but I think, I think it's gonna work. So I will carry on <laughs> with that. I'm gonna kind of lay this where it needs to be and make sure, flip it and make sure this is where it needs to be, where I've got this next section marked here. And we'll be able to get, hopefully get these two done today. And maybe even on the truck. The bad thing is I gotta go back and I gotta weld all this back up now. That's a pretty good gap. It's not terrible, but I'll start at the V and kind of work my way out. So, oh well. I thought about just trying to heat it and bend it, but I have tried that in the past and it's hard to get a nice even curve and I kind of want them all to match. So we will keep at it. Got a lot of cutting. Probably definitely going to wear through blade on the saw. It was almost done anyway. It was time for a change. Well, that's kind of just thrown up there. I don't know if you can see that or not. The way it's hitting. Uh, it's not centered. This side's down lower. That side's up higher. But I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna work. Dead center. After I get all this welded up, I'm just gonna basically put that around a carport pole and pull on it just a little bit to get a little. We want a little bit of a hump right there. I don't think I want it straight across. I want a little bit of a curve. But I think that's going to work. I hope it's going to work. Because <laughs> I only have one more 10 foot piece of that. So I don't have enough if I mess up. Yeah, I think it'll work. So I think what I'm going to do is lay the buck in there. And kind of ratchet strap the thing down where it needs to go. And I'm going to go weld those. Around the tight curve. And then we'll be able to flex it and kind of make our ends and things like that. I'm probably going to leave the last two on the end not welded if we need to tweak, or last three maybe, if we need to tweak that just a little bit to get this to kind of position. The way I've got it sitting right now, because it's holding the weight of itself, it's flexing out some. So it actually sits tighter, what I'm talking about here, sits tighter than what that piece is kicking out to be. We want it to stand just a little bit proud of the square tube because I'm going to put that three quarter in there and so this needs to sit outside plus our canvas needs to hang out just a little bit. I think it's going to work. All we can do is try, right? And the, uh, the rubber is serving very well as a workbench just like the double cab does. Well, I've got one of them pretty close. I think where I can live with it. I would like it to not be so pointed right there so I may work on that just a little bit but it looks pretty good I think yeah I think I may stand put it up on it and stand on either side and kind of push that down a little bit but I can live with that and the good thing is they line up with each other so I can also live with that well I'm going for a little something like that the front one right there is off so I need to work on that a little bit and then I think here and right here needs to come up and not be as pointed in the middle. Other than that, it looks pretty decent. <laughs> the Land Rover people, the purists, are going to flip out because Land Rovers always use uh, round tube. 
I'm using square tube, but I like to use square tube because I can come off of that and build other things. And of course, nothing's lined up. I think the back is a little higher than the front. I don't want it much taller, so I'll probably make my front one be my leading edge and then just make the back one line up with that. I definitely don't want it any higher than it is. It kind of looks, it's going to look silly enough. Yeah, we give it a go. I've got the hoop set all painted and ready to throw back on the truck and I'm just putting this on and I thought I might share with you uh, one of the little tricks I use. This one has a rivet there on top and the two holes it goes through so I drilled three holes so that it'll self kind of self right where it needs to go but it creates a problem because down under here is where you have to feed your nut to get that to lock up there. Rut row. Sounds like I may need to intervene inside. Or not. So I just take a little bearing grease and then you can just touch your nylock nut and it'll stay where it's supposed to until you can get the bolt through there to get a hold of it. Yeah, here I am kind of burning the midnight oil again. And you know, sometimes when you go to build something, it, you, you gotta kind of throw the pieces together before you realize it's not right. <laughs> it's too tall. At least I think it's too tall for what I want. So I am gonna drop it down four inches. But everything is built, all the slats are in. So all I have to do is take off, just take these two, these two screws right here, just take those out. We'll lift those top pieces off and then I'll cut the poles all down by four inches. It's just too, too much gap right here. It's less than my double cab, but on the Rover, it just looks ridiculous. <laughs> it already looks ridiculous enough. It doesn't need any help, but I just think it's too, it's too tall. So we're gonna bring it down a little more even with the cab. I think I'll be happier with it. Because if I go ahead and do this now, then I'm just gonna have to redo all the canvas later. So I'm gonna let that kind of sit on there tonight. Kind of get some of those wrinkles and things out of it. But yeah, that's a bummer. So unfortunately, I can't do much cutting now because everyone's asleep. <laughs> Otherwise, I would just pop that off right now and cut those real quick. But at least it's not that hard to take apart. It just, it doesn't, it's not right. Like the roof line, it's too dark for you to see, but it's just not right. It, it's not, it's not what I want. So, no biggie. Just pull it off when we can see a little better. I'm not a huge fan of the color, but we didn't have very many choices because I wanted to just use a tarp. But yeah, I think if we come, put my hand there maybe, if we come down a little bit, I think it'll look better. So I guess I'm going to have to quit for tonight. <laughs> I hate quitting when I'm in the, the mood to keep going, but anywho, bummer. Well, I slept on it thought about it over over a good sleep and I cut it off got up this morning early and cut it down four inches it is much better it does not look half as ridiculous as it did that pole is right where we need to be I gotta clean this mess up out here and the green canvas that I had first that I had last night on there I hate so I'm gonna go with that khaki color that's in there I can get those tarps no problem, just any place has those, that yellow color. I want this, this is what I want. That's what's on the back right here. But you can't buy them anywhere, can't even order them. When you order off of Amazon, you get that guacamole green. I hate it, it's terrible. It does not match the truck. So I'm gonna go get one of these tan canvases. 
Um, these weather kind of cool and get a, a nice patina to them. I'll show you real quick. So back here on Pickles Engine is one that's got some really nice, starting to get a nice look to it. So I will go get one of those. I could pull this one off, but it's not big enough. It's a six by eight. I need an eight by 10. Really a, a 10 by 12 is preferable, but we're gonna go for that on that. I think it'll look, I think it'll look good. But I have got to stay out here and kind of clean up some of this junk. I can't take it anymore. It's driving me nuts. It's pretty strong, too. It shakes the whole truck. It's like my bus. And I just went through the post right here. So, nothing fancy. Just used what the rover had to give me. And it worked. So when I'm doing these, I did that one over there. And that one's kind of messed up right now. I had some stuff in the back, so I moved that up and over. But I roll in the extra so that you have kind of a finished seam. So I'll sew my other piece in under here. And so when I stitch on top, you won't see that. But yeah, I think that will work. So we basically just need to get a corner measurement and an up there measurement and lucky for us we have this arch because I made a buck and that fits the buck so we know we can cut our fabric using that so why don't I go make a couple measurements I need to measure from the height here we'll take our buck and we'll draw that on top of the fabric and then we'll work that in and pin it and then work in our webbing. Our webbing is green. I'm gonna use what we used on the Higgins. You know, this is like uh, patches. <laughs> My brother has that name for his car, but this car should have been called Patches. Raggedy Ann is his car's name. All right, let me get some measurements. I think I've about got it fitted. The I'm making the top piece this way because I want it to swing out and be an awning for the camp kitchen, which will be set up right here. So I think that's probably good. It'll There are uh, tie downs on the tailgate. There's the, a little welded bracket on the tailgate. Those overlap well. I'll probably just put Velcro, a little bit of Velcro in there, just like I did on the sides. That's that industrial strength Velcro. That stuff's awesome. Two inch wide. So there'll be a black, you'll see a black strip on uh, these little U pieces here, unfortunately. Now that might need to come up a little bit. But I think that's okay. We'll, we'll live with that because that's going to be pulled over. And it'll clear, it'll clear the tailgate. So I won't trim it probably until we get the tailgate up because I want to sew a pocket in there for my bar that's going to support it when the uh, awning is out. So I won't hem that yet. And then the top piece I have pinned in and I'm getting ready to cut these little pieces right here. Now something's going to have to happen here, a little triangle piece or something that comes and gets up under that lip. There's a little space up under there where I can put a little clip under it. So that's what I'm planning to do. So we'll go ahead and sew that probably just square and then I'll sew a piece that comes off and hooks in over here. About to get it. It's so much quicker than doing a, a Higgins. <laughs> so I've been at it about two hours and uh yeah, I think probably another hour and I'll have it knocked out. And it looks like probably good timing for that. It's supposed to rain later, I think. All right, I like it. Well, we got a little pop-up of liquid sunshine, unexpected. So I just threw a canvas over a canvas and worked a little bit on the inside while that came down. And you know what? The green canvas leaks, but it kept me mostly dry. 
<laughs> and I just tucked up the door so it didn't get soaking wet. I was in pinning that and I'm like, do I hear rain on this roof? Sure enough, and we're puking out right here. Not sure where that's coming from. But, oh well, it's not like it's going to hurt this truck. <laughs> but yeah, got a little wet. I should go get the uh, car wash stuff and give it a bath. Free water. I feel refreshed, don't you? Well, there's the canvas kind of all in its uh, sort of completedness. All my strings need to be cut and everything like that. I still got to figure out what I'm going to do up here uh, with this turn that I got to make. So I'll have to figure that out at some point. But we camped in it this weekend. I drove it about 80 miles round trip and it did fantastic. It didn't fly off and do anything crazy. I made mine where if you want just this portion to roll up or kick out to be an awning, you can do that or you can drop it down and the whole thing will come up. Just release these, there's a couple little buckles inside here, just buckle through these little tabs. So you just release those and you can easily roll up this whole thing as one unit. Unlike the double cab uh, Volkswagen, this has a tailgate, so I kind of wanted to differentiate that. The double cab, it goes all the way across. Uh, I just put some snaps over here on the side, so if you want to leave this portion down while you're driving, and I did, you just snap it on, it stays put. Still got to come up with what we're doing up here though, so I just used the clamps off of the, the battery charger that we took with us as our, it actually is wired with an electrical outlet so you can plug all your cell phones and all that stuff in it. it has a light in it. Uh, yeah. Window's not finished or anything, but overall the design is there. I'm just going to trim some strings and hem some stuff up. It just attaches with four of those tabs that come down with snaps. So you just release those if you want to pull it off. But I've wanted to do this for a long time for this truck, and it, I'm glad it's done. Well, sort of done. i got to do some finishing touches, but it survived the 80-mile round trip. No problem. It's starting to already get dingy looking and dirty, which I like. So it doesn't look like it's brand new and made. Just need to clean it up a little bit, and uh, I think we got it. I'll just step you up on top here and see. Maybe if I go up on the fender. There we go. It's pretty much exactly like the double cab, just on a little bit smaller scale. But I'm pretty pleased with that. A few more tweaks and I think we've got it. All right, with that, everybody, I'm going to sign off. We'll see you next time. such a beautiful foggy morning. I'm out here late from when I first stepped out, but I just had this sheer, it didn't have the highway sound behind us. Just a gorgeous morning today.